Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Market Prep. I hope you're having an amazing morning. Hope you guys had an incredible day yesterday. Good morning, Peter. How are you doing today, my friend? Carlos, I am doing great on this Tuesday morning. How are you? Doing good, man. Doing real good. Um, excellent, excellent. Uh, interesting Tuesday morning, guys. CPI data coming out shortly, and that should be very, very exciting as we look at the spy here and wait for that data to come out. Uh, and then tomorrow. Fed meeting, Fed decision. I mean, it is just uh, going to be uh, hopefully fun. Hopefully fun. Um, and these are clearly related. Um, it, just yes. to get in advance of this, the anticipation is that uh, the Fed, so everybody's sort of looking to see what the CPI number is going to say, not just for the number, but because the anticipation is that if it's in line, the Fed may ease on their interest rate increases. So if we get good numbers today, meaning they're you know sort of as expected, um, then the Fed tomorrow may announce that they will not increase interest rates, which the market will certainly react to. So it's a couple of days of economic data that will be interesting and certainly will be impactful. Um, in fact, we've already started the morning with some economic data. We had the, um, the what is it, the NFIB uh, optimism report, which is a small business optimism. That came out early this morning at 6 a.m. And um, the previous number had been 89. It's sort of a an overall rating of optimism. So it's really all just relative anyways. Um, and uh, they're expecting it optimism to drop to 88.3, but it actually went up to 89.4. So a little surprise. So, the, you know, small business optimism is generally seen as a good sign. Uh, presumably their, you know, business fortunes are going up. So, and it's expected that, you know, if this all continues, we may just continue to see some good news this morning. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. We're eagerly awaiting. The news is a coming. Yes, we go. Here we go. Spice reacting. Let's see how everything unfolds. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, uh, just a reminder: there's essentially four numbers that are coming out. Um, it, it's the you got the CPI and core CPI, and then those same two numbers year over year. So we get a monthly number and then a year over year number. So uh, it's it's really, you know, it's all sort of an, you know, <laughs> they're all going to generally are in line, right? You don't normally get um, them moving in opposite directions, but, uh, um, and I don't know, does it show? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't actually show the numbers. I put them in an extra field, but it doesn't show in our, our sheet there. So um, anyways, we'll, we'll see what they actually uh, come out as. I'm not... My little uh, live feed there is not uh, giving me anything yet. But um, so far, early reports, I don't have the number, but an early report said that it's in line with expectations. So that's good, which would reflect in the market. Notice how we had the, a big volume spike and it's sort of like, look at the candle, it just went up and down and we're more or less at the point at which we started. So, um, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm not seeing, uh, so uh, we'll start with some of the numbers here. And thanks to those in the room that are helping me out, uh, seeing some of the numbers. So um, the uh, forecast for the year over year was at 4.0%. Previously had been 4.9. Um, and this is for the just CPI. Um, and the, it came in basically right at four. So that is exactly in line with expectations. Um, of course, CPI was expected to be 0.4 for the month, and it increases 0.4. So we're exactly right there. Uh, the expectation for, that's on core CPI. The regular CPI for the month was expected to be 0.1, and it was 0.1. So, so I mean, right now, everything is completely in line, exactly on line with the, um, uh, the, uh, the estimates. Interestingly, this is not one of the measured numbers, but as a secondary um, the core CPI, when you take out food and energy, is was actually down 
6.4%. And if you've been to the grocery store recently, you can uh, you understand that food prices are absolutely up. I was in the grocery my wife came back from the grocery store yesterday and was saying, "Do you know that a, you know, a jar of peanut butter was 7 bucks?" I'm like, $7? It is it's like, wild. <laughs> It's crazy, man. Like seven bucks. And it's like, I'm not shopping Whole Foods here, man. I can't afford that. It's this is just like regular old, you know, peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways. It, it, so it all is, right. So food seems wild. to be driving the the costs, but overall, all the CPI numbers are pretty much in line with expectations. So that means the the market is free to to move on its own. Remember. This, like I said, is a lead into tomorrow. So today may still be a little bit of a hold. Excuse me, my goodness, a little bit of a holding pattern. We may not move a lot because everybody's looking to, of course, the Fed numbers, which are coming out tomorrow, and um, that's that's going to be a, a big one. So uh, we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens. Anyways, uh, no, the Fed is. Wait a second. When is the Fed coming up? Hold on. There yeah, we tomorrow. go. Yeah, it is tomorrow. Tomorrow, Wednesday. Yeah, two o'clock yeah. tomorrow. Yep. So that, so, that'll be one of the fun. Yeah, I was days. getting lost. No, not tomorrow. You're, you're good out there. Um, excellent, excellent. Looking forward to see what uh, how the market reacts today, and then tomorrow we get the big, uh, big reaction. We will have this. We have a. We'll have, we have two openings tomorrow. We have the nine thirty open at the market, and then we have the Fed Powell minutes open yeah. opening <laughs> at two at two o'clock, two thirty. Um, no. Yeah. The last number I'll just mention, if rounded out, just because I didn't. Uh, the core CPI year over year was expected to be five point three. It is. 5.3. What's interesting, though, to note, uh, by the way, that all of these uh, estimates were down from the previous period, right? So like the year over year previously had been 5.5. The fact that it's 5.3 means that's actually a, a decrease in you know the period over period uh, measurement, but it's in line with expectations. So again, good signals for the Fed to say, okay, it looks like things are going the direction they want, finally, right? The market is finally, or the overall economy, I should say, is finally reacting um, as they would expect, which means they may be able to ease on the interest rate. So again, we'll, we'll see what happens. That's what we get. Right, Raf okay. wants me to get more excited. I could, but then, then things start to break because I wave my <laughs> arms too much. There we go. Well, the pen hasn't come out yet, so we're still in good shape here, guys. Uh, once the pen starts clicking, you know, Peter is <laughs> going I got it right here. It's, it's, it's always on the ready. <laughs> there you go. Um, Friends, let's get let's get right to it. So here we have our gappers list today. Everything in the green right now. The market slightly uh, up this morning, even before the numbers came out. The overall market was slightly up very early on in the pre market hours here. So, um, looking to head north at the moment, we're up about uh, about a quarter of a percent right now, trying to get stable here. Let's see how that ends up before nine thirty, before nine fifteen, <laughs> before we hop off here, because anything can happen there. Um, Sorry, too. Um, yeah, yesterday, remember I was saying uh, our conversation yesterday seemed to be uh, all about uh, AI and uh, EVs. Today, it's all about sports. We're going to be talking sports a little bit this morning. So a number of sports related stories. So we'll see what happens there. And I, I want to just issue a public apology to everybody out there because it seems based on the number of comments, I have scarred many of you for life. So I will... I will keep my clothes on now. You know, it's it's up to Carlos, man. He just can't be shaming me publicly like that, or we have to break out the shame sign. Again, if if so. you miss what uh, Peter is talking about, we have a nice record of it on YouTube. It, it was Friday. Was it Friday's episode? It, I think it, it was, was Friday. I think yeah. it was Friday's show. Just go right to the to the end, towards the end a little bit. You see uh, Peter's screen go dark for a minute, and then he comes back, and you'll be enlightened with uh, some real fun stuff. So, all right, <laughs> there, we, <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, here you have it, guys. Um, you mentioned sports. So a lot on here. Uh, Man, you is sports, if I remember correctly. There's a few on here. You, you have Billy yeah. Carvana that we know. You have Rice. So a lot in the green. Oracle, earnings, and all kinds of stuff going on there. Um, they did well. At least it was well-received. And we have a bunch of stuff, PLTR, CCL, where's American Airlines? I feel like uh, there might be some uh, coming comeback from for CCL and American Airlines, which traded amazing yesterday. Both of them did very, very well. Um, but yeah, a lot on this list, guys. Baba towards the end. There's so much to go through here. We'll do the top five, top six, maybe. Then we'll hand it off to the room, see what you guys like, and make sure we go through those um, this morning. So um, let's have to it. We'll skip the stuff from yesterday just for the sake of time. 
um, will hop right into our list. Let's start here with uh, Man U this morning. This one here, it is up 16%. Uh, uh, one million shares traded. You mentioned sports, Peter. This is not a great trader, but it's up today. Um, what's the latest and greatest? Yeah, they, they've been in a long-term, well, not long-term. They've been in a fight here over the last little while for um, uh, takeover bid. So they sort of put, the, Man U put themselves on the market. If you're a sports fan, you, I'm sure you were a, a football fan. European football. Yeah, I'm sure you know all about this. But there, there's been a bid, uh, a fight basically between two bidders. So there's a British billionaire by the name of Jim Ratcliffe. I think that's his name. Jim Ratcliffe, anyways, who's been putting in a bid. And he's been competing with a sheik out of Qatar. He happens to be the son of, I think, their foreign minister or something. But uh, anyways, uh, Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad El Thani uh, has been, uh, so we'll just call him uh, Sheikh Jassim. Anyways, he's been uh, competing. He's put in five bids as uh, Radcliffe keeps trying to one-up him on the bid. And he put in a new one, and he said it's his fifth and final um, for the football club. So uh, the shares have been up almost 20% at certain points this morning um, on the anticipation of that. You can see it's dropped down here a little bit, but, uh, uh, you know, it's it's it would be um, the most expensive team purchase ever. And this falls in line with what we've been seeing. Um, we sort of indirectly talked about this last little while where we're seeing, you know, the oil futures out of those, those um uh, uh, like the oil rich countries uh, start to diversify, right? They're trying to get in other businesses. We had the golf news that uh, we talked about on, I think that was on Friday, actually. Um, that was, uh, you know, sort of shaking up the world a little bit with the live LIV golf merging with the PGA, uh, big money behind it, right? Cause those, you know, the oil is not going to be around forever in terms of the public use of it, uh, nor the reserves. And they're looking to leverage their deep cash reserves now to invest in other, you know, activities. And, and this is just one example. So it's uh, interesting times anyways. Whether Man U becomes a tradable stock today, I don't know. You have to keep in mind, dual traded here. So um, it's going to, it might be a little more difficult to trade than others. And the reactions may not be quite uh, clearly telegraphed on the, on the, chart i've tried to watch this during earnings never given me a good trading opportunity maybe today's the day i mean we certainly have some decent volume with already a million shares but um i think at best for me it'll be a secondary watch list you know more out of interest than actual expectation of a good trade yeah yeah i'm with you there we, we had a gap up like this before with uh, with tons of activity activity in the pre-market and it traded horrible. So I, I have no no faith in it at all. But if you're watching it, great, because I, I know you could call out something if you see something. But um, but yeah, it won't be on my list this morning. Another one here that doesn't look too great is FRO. And this is Frontline. Uh, also another one that we've seen on our gap up and down list before. It's gapping up uh, 6.1, but the volume is very light. I don't like 151,000 for this one. Uh, Peter, any anything interesting on this? Uh, well, this is Froyo the yogurt. No, I'm kidding. It's, it's uh, is uh, it? Frontline. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see Fro, I, I get hungry for frozen yogurt for some reason. Um, anyways, it's an oil and gas company out of Cyprus. So it's an offshore oil and gas, offshore to the U.S. anyways. Um, yeah, not not a great trading stock. And I don't really have a lot of news. I mean, they've got a dividend that's coming out. Um, this could be a little little bit of a push up as people are mm -hmm. positioning to take advantage. Their dividend's usually pretty healthy. Um, but yeah, that's really all that's happening. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, I don't like this one for the way it's setting up right now, guys. So I am going to uh, keep it off my list. Let's take a look at GameStop GME this morning up 5.5. Just started to get going about five minutes ago. And then you're seeing here 230,000 shares traded. So um, interesting volume, interesting action worth putting here on a secondary. Also, um, and I say secondary because GameStop could be so wild at times. Uh, look at the daily on GameStop. Um, big gap down, uh, firing of the CEO, earnings, nothing's looking good for them. Uh, and we're just coming right back to where we were just a few days ago. Um, so yeah. that's uh, interesting. So G GameStop has announced they're opening 4,000 new stores. No, I'm kidding. I just, uh, <laughs> I'm like, wait, I'm well, we just today. talked about who's buying at GameStop. If they're opening 4,000 <laughs> stores, man, you would have yeah. me on that one. <laughs> yeah. 
It's actually uh, it's actually a reaction to some insider buying. Uh, buying. So they've got two directors that uh, bought some significant shares, and that seems to be driving the price. Now, I, I, I hope that they're not the only volume here, because if they are, as soon as they stop buying, it's going to drop again. But uh, it, it is sort of a reaction, anyways, to the insider uh, buying, where these uh, directors are, are buying some shares in the in the company. So I guess from the inside, they seem to think it's a good time to uh, to double down and reinvest, but. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I, uh, I am going to get a Apollo T shirt with a BBT um, logo and go into GameStop with a microphone and, and camera and ask the person, what are you selling here? And go to yeah, a few of them. We'll do a documentary should. out of it. Like, what are you selling here? Yeah. Can I go to the back? Can I stick around for a day? Who's coming in to buy here uh, games? Because uh, it's not my nephew. Awesome. They buy a lot of games. Actually, that's it will be fun, right? Fun. Yeah. yeah we BBT News, to like, you know? Yeah. Live on the scene reporting. Front lines. Carlos. I think that would be great. I, I think it will be amazing, man. I think it will be a good hit. So let's we'll start with GameStop and see where, we, where it goes. We might end up in in uh, AI headquarters or something. We'll see. We'll figure it out. Um, uh, hey, you got to slip in AI there. Uh, of well, course. We, of course. Don't worry, we'll be talking AI. You can't get out of the morning without talking AI. Oh, no speaking of way. which, look what's next on our list uh oracle and i know oracle spoke a lot about ai oracle had earnings after the close yesterday uh, i was really the only thing with earnings worth watching you can see that after hours they uh, jumped up uh a little bit uh, there yesterday and are holding the gains so far this morning what i find fascinating is they said one of the reasons for their gains was the demand in what is being called generative ai um, which is sort of the new term they're using for the AI. Again, to me, it's like qualifying. It's not real artificial intelligence. It's just, it's generating its own code. So they're calling it generative. Anyways, at, at what point does a being become sentient? Anyway, it's uh, it, it'll be a debate for the ages. Anyways, well, it, it computer sure rights. Be. Robot rights. Anyways, um, but what was interesting is that they attributed some of their earnings beat. So they beat their numbers, which is why it was good. But they attributed some of that because of an increase in demand for their cloud computing services due to AI. Now, I, you know, I know Oracle relatively well, having worked with and competed against them for decades in the industry. They don't move too fast. And um, they yeah. are like one of the most bureaucratic organizations I've ever, uh, you know, ever had to try and work with. I just can't believe that that really that there's a lot of AI driven growth. There's probably some, but I, I, I'm very skeptical. But you know what? They're spinning the hype. I'm sure they can, you know, justify it. They are an investor in the C3 AI, which is the company AI, right? So. We can't forget that, that some of the gains are, frankly, they, they made the smart move of investing in them as an early stage uh, supporter. So, you know, the, 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 there's no question that they've got their eye on AI and, you know, smart people and a smart organization. But are they driving a significant part of their revenue from AI? I'm extraordinarily skeptical. So anyways, from a trading perspective. Not a great trader, but look at the volume this morning. Like we've already got some good volume on this, and uh, and you know maybe today is Oracle's day. I mean uh, we're we're almost to a million shares. I don't. I think Oracle is dual traded. I'm not positive about that one, but it would make think sense. They to are, me. Um, but I, I'm I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, uh, maybe not. Maybe, maybe they're only traded on the. Uh, and the Nisey. Um, but it is a Nisey stock, which means it does trade a little, you know, different, a little more muted than you often get out of NASDAQ stock. So I'm going to keep an eye on it, but I don't I don't have high hopes that I'm going to get a great trade out of it. Yeah, I, I, I like the gap, the gap up here, guys, two days in a row. I think it's worth taking a look at. I mean, if you'd like to trade the stock, it is definitely in play. Today is going to trade great, I think, compared to how it trades. Now, how AMD trades, how NVIDIA trades, and Apple trades, but this stock will trade great today for the way that it does its thing. So definitely in play. Yeah. Um, let, let's see what it does. Good. Can we talk about those since you brought them up? I mean, we AMD sure can. and let's NVIDIA. Start with AMD. Oh, my goodness. Because they're not on yeah. our gappers list. Well, maybe AMD is down there on the on the gappers list. Why it's probably it? down it there somewhere. Be. Yeah. Yep. It, it it's only here. it's up 2.7%, but it's up 2.7% and there it is. Mm -hmm, I knew it would mm -hmm. be there. Um, but look at what it did. Overnight, it's broken up above the area. Remember we said we liked the daily yesterday. Well, it did break above it, but it took until after hours to do so. Strong day on AMD yesterday. I mean, it really just sort of kept 
just climbing throughout the day yesterday. Nothing, nothing, you know, sort of super aggressive, but steady climbing. So I'm expecting a good day on AMD today. Again, whether the good day means it's going up or it's going to retrace, I don't honestly know at this point, but it's in, uh, it's certainly in an attractive area sitting at 132, 60, 70 pre-market. Um, yeah, this thing could go anywhere. And it's, it seems like, you know, I'm not sure why AMD is more excited than the rest. I mean, it's up more, NVIDIA's up, but not quite as much. Um, and some of the others are, are moving as well. Uh, Intel percentage wise is actually up a little bit more, but we're seeing, you know, this whole sector, MU, uh, TSM even, right? They're all sort of moving this morning. So I think this is a good sector to keep an eye on. It is, look at Intel too. Someone mentioned this in chat as well. I think Andy, um, I'm sorry, not Andy, uh, the electrical trader on YouTube chat. Yeah, Intel also, man, it's, it's wow, this looks good also, worth adding as a second there, just because I have so many, depending on how you like your list, yeah. you can put this on the top. The, NVIDIA, we're gonna add this as well, guys. I mean, 1.1 yeah. million of 1.7, just massive. And while we're right. indirectly talking about AI, because you know these yeah. are trading on sort of an AI play, we can't forget about PLTR. It just keeps going with volume. Again, when the market's open, I, I don't love the trading action, but I can't deny, I mean, we're already at 2.4 million shares pre-market, and yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it just keeps it, it keeps getting this little activity. It, it's surprisingly um, persistent. I would have thought that it already would have faded away. The volume would have dropped off, but it is not. I mean, it's uh, it's continuing to churn on on volume here. So I, I you know, I mean, I, I got to keep an eye on it because I just never know when that big day is going to come. Notice that we've moved now. Like AI was the stock that we were watching for right. you know a period of time. And uh, it seems like that volume has fallen off a little bit and it's moving to their your, your next rung. And again, I would ask you to keep in mind, this is exactly part of the progression that happens. We see this over and over and over again when you get these hot sectors, right? Yeah. You get yeah. the first the first runners to the market that get sort of all the, the news and, and the attention like AI, right? Relatively small company. Then you get the bigger players that come in and say, well, we're doing it too. And they sort of prove a more effective business model. Um, and then they start to see a lot of growth, right? Which now is what we're seeing, like the oracles and uh, PLTR, I would put sort of in the, the lower edge of that bucket. And of course, those that are gonna, uh, like the, the semiconductors, AMD and, and NVIDIA. You know, we all know that uh, Microsoft and even Amazon and like, you know, they all sort of said, yeah, 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 we're doing AI too, right? So, but, you know, bigger companies like that, the massive ones don't see the big increase. The next step that is inevitable is when people start saying, so where's the revenue again for this? Show me how you're making lots of money. So that's why it's interesting that Oracle started to try and make that leap, but it's going to be hard for them to prove that a big part of their revenues going forward are going to be driven out of AI. So that's what's going to be sought out of these companies. That's often when we start start to see a little bit of concern, right? Oh my God, are they overvalued because they can't generate as much revenue as this massive valuation would imply? Of course it is, right? Yeah, yeah. It's part yeah. of the cycle. It's a bubble. It's a <laughs> but, bubble. <laughs> it's a bubble, but yep. the problem is don't don't go in too early, assuming that the bubble's about to burst because right, it can right. be timing very a bubble dangerous. can be very it's dangerous. Yeah. yeah, exactly. As we've seen time again, you know, it's it's almost like that. You get that last hurrah where you think it's almost over, and then suddenly, th you know, stock prices double. And if you were short, yeah, you can you can be hurt. <clears throat> so just be careful. We'll take it for what comes and uh and and see where it goes but i i, I love in this hype it's a good one right this is at least lasting longer than the nfts did <laughs> so yeah it's yeah. it's a little more fun and and yeah, you know absolutely. Th this is all aside from the fact that like carlos ai here is our ai generated uh you know live person <laughs> yeah very advanced <laughs> you know complicated. who knows where this is going to go mm -hmm. Yeah, look, I mean, it's funny. I had a good philosophical debate with a friend of mine. Uh, she was excited. She's invested in a local AI company to do help with, anyways, her business. And I said, well, here, here's where I see the reality of AI. And we had this big discussion about what it could mean about having computers make decisions for us when we don't understand how they're making the decisions. But we won't get into that right now. But it's fascinating to me. This actually has legitimate impact on society long term, unlike an NFT, which you know, can amuse you with a monkey picture, but that's about it. So yeah. we'll see where this goes. It's pretty fun. We'll see, man. We'll see. This conversation can get really deep really quickly because it's just, it's very, it's that, it's that interesting. You know, it really is. So, um, yeah. 
there you have it guys right now oracle amd nvidia on the list all of them looking really really good this morning and we have a ton here guys i'm not gonna go through all of them there's so many that look good this morning uh yeah. andy andy a sanderson by the way in the uk won the draw for um our um our new york city uh meetup that we're doing so he won the draw you know we we're giving away a um either a one-year membership or a um a a free uh access to one of our events he's in the uk so he's going to take right. the membership so congrats my man um i i All think right. you were a member before i don't recall 100 i think it was you and if you were you try to get away you're going to pull you back in with a free membership for a year so welcome back if that's the case um he was awesome. okay you were okay come right back in man come right back in you can't get away that easy so congrats <laughs> uh on your one year membership so yeah maybe maybe we'll have another one though so that was fun that was fun yeah. um all right um, uh off the gappers list if i yep. can come back because you're right there's a lot on there one i'll mention neo remember we talked about neo in the ev sector generally um a little bit yesterday uh it, it neo uh, was one of the ones that uh you know was sort of gapping down uh, today they're they're looking strong. Big volume pre market, almost two and a half million shares traded, up three point eight percent. Not a great trader because you can see, even see this morning. Look at that sort of algo barcode like barcode like uh, you know price action. But they are getting volume, so you know maybe Neo is going to be back in play one way or the other. You know you keep an eye on these EVs, especially with Tesla going uh, a little crazy here, hanging out over uh, two fifty as it has yeah. been for the last couple of days here. and But anyways, I noticed Neo on the list, and I thought it was interesting that it was today that it was moving. A um, uh, yeah. couple of others that aren't on our list that I'll just mention quickly, Carlos, before you have mm -hmm. to ask me, since we got nothing on the gap down. It's all about the upside. Yeah. Um, I said we were going to talk sports, so let's talk a couple of different sports related. We already talked about uh, Manchester United and that potential takeover. Um, uh, the ATVI... Might be worth watching. I haven't seen any movement pre-market on it, but um, the FTC is, uh, you know, sort of blocking, looking to block the acquisition by Microsoft. Remember, this is like a six billion dollar purchase that Microsoft has been trying to get through for forever. It feels like, uh, but uh, there was a block in the UK, a concern over com competition. I, it's amazing to me that there's now such a good market concern over video games. You know. It's, another sports sort of related thing but uh, video games seem to be a big concern everybody's worried about a lack of competition so now the u.s is getting on board with the ftc looking to block that acquisition so that's usually a blow for atvi but you know what this has been going on for, going on for so long it's almost been built in already but there there could be some downside uh to atvi once the market opens and uh last but not least netflix um netflix was getting a little bit of a boost this morning, um, as there's a rumor, not fact, but just rumor that they may start live streaming sports. We've seen that in some other platforms, uh, Amazon Live, for example, Amazon Prime was live streaming some hockey games. And uh, I think they also, do they have the football contract in the US, the NFL? Somebody did, anyways. Yeah. So uh, there, there's precedent does, for that. Yeah. Yeah, others have done it. Um, Netflix was sort of suggesting they might start live streaming uh, Formula One um, as well as, I think it was some golf. So, um, yeah, and they've got, uh, yeah, Thursday Night Football, NVIDIA saying, yeah. So, anyways, so that was a rumor on Netflix, and we can see Netflix up a little bit pre-market, sitting right at this 430 whole dollar number. So, it, it, might, be, uh, it might be a mover, maybe a secondary play because it's not really not a lot of volume so far pre-market but i thought yeah. i would just uh, mention it all right so there you excellent. go it's excellent guys let's do this so it's running a little bit uh, late on time here because just so much to talk about so much to watch here let's go <laughs> over so to excited. you guys i've just been going on no no you're good you're good it's just it's a lot to watch here we can't get to this list um let's take it to the chat room i know um there's a few that you have thrown out some tickers we'll look at those let's start here oracle is, is uh, we have it on deck we have an amd nvidia and tesla gamestop secondary and intc as well also doing very good what are you guys looking at this morning? Uh, Peter, is there anything else that you have on your list that you like that we haven't looked at yet? Uh, nothing that I have not already mentioned. No, I, I've covered a lot of ground here this morning. So, All right, no worries. Let's take a look at AI today. So here is AI this morning. I, I don't like AI. And, and Peter kind of went over this already a little bit. And I, I, he's hit it right on the, on the spot. I think if you want to trade AI, there are other opportunities like PLTR. 
um, that you can trade that are going to be more stable. You know, PLTR even now is looking to probably get going. Um, believe it or not, NVIDIA, AMD, these are AI plays, Oracle, same thing here. So I think there's other companies that can trade a little bit better. Can you have an explosive move on AI? Uh, yes, you can. You can get to 44 very easily. But I think it's, I, I have not really traded this yet. Um, every time this is hot, there are other tickers like PLTR that are moving much better. So I look forward to those. Uh, CCL, let's take a look at that one. Vincent and a couple of people on YouTube have mentioned this one. I don't know about today. I mean, it, we had a, such a great day yesterday. Um, and, and you know what? Their, their pre-market action was a bit better, not by much. And what an incredible run. Travel, especially business, is coming back. Business travel. So um, that's helping uh, the likes of American Airlines and, and United Airlines. You saw the great move they had in the last couple of days. So again, very explosive. Gave us, gave us kind of flashbacks of what these stocks used to be when they were in play. I mean, the guys, NCLA's, American Airlines, CCL, were our AMD, NVIDIA, and Tesla at one point, right? We just kept watching these over and over again. I don't think we we're there yet, but a second opportunity here can uh, come into play. Um, I'll put CCL on deck. Let's see if this this hype or this move is going to continue. Yeah, it certainly moved yesterday. One of the stamps of legitimacy for me is when uh, if John comes on and said he was taking a hive day break on it, I mean, then you know it's a real player. Unfortunately, that's a laggard indicator because I only find that out after it's already been in play. But, you know, if I hear John took a high of day trade, then I can look at it for a potential reversal. So, and I know I'm, I'm pretty sure that he, when he came on yesterday, he said he was trading it. So there you go. So it's, uh, I, I use that to say, okay, CCL was really a player. Maybe I can, uh, you know, maybe I can, I can do the opposite. Take a yeah. reversal. <laughs> Absolutely. Here is a couple of you guys mentioning Baba Marius in our chat and also Drummer Max in YouTube. So here's Baba this morning. They're up 2.7. Uh, and, and, and I like this because I, I got my second options trade on Baba. I, st I uh, did it on Friday. So I, I, I kind of know what I'm doing, but not really. But the two have wor working out pretty good right now. So here is Baba, guys. I like this one also for a possible day trade, uh, pushing higher, breaking out of this level. So that's good. We're up 2.7. This can be good even if it comes right back down to 86. So uh, hopefully not for my uh, options position, but for day trading, I, I do like it this morning. Something different than the AI stuff we all have on deck here. Uh, we'd like to watch something outside of just all this tech stuff that's been really good to us, by the way. Um, AMD at pre-market high. Yeah, AMD is just wild, man. I mean, look at this. It's going to break this pre-market high here. Uh, and then it's just wild. So um, we got to eventually set up a line here for Peter, his um, uh, shot line. So or, no, not shot. Excuse me. His uh, his drink. Right. He takes a drink of, uh, <laughs> of his scotch and take shots to be clear. Um, so we, we have to set that up eventually there. Uh, stop stop putting drink lines on there. You're you're bad yeah. influence on that. <laughs> Look, some, I, I tell you yeah. what, put one at uh, 150. I'll, I'll honor that. 150 one. is reasonable. 150 is reasonable. <laughs> um, it's you know. a, hopefully that it's a little ways to go before we get there. It's not all time highs we, as we looked at yesterday. We've been higher, but at least uh, you know, yeah, I don't have to yeah. drink in the middle of the day today probably. Hopefully not, but it, who knows? Uh, tomorrow, maybe after CPI did, after a uh, Fed uh, Fed and decision. So we'll see. All right, guys, there we have it. So, so far, um, a couple of things that look really good. Let's look at it one last one. Then we'll head over to community events and announcements. We'll come back. We'll do levels for all this stuff that's just high flying this morning. Uh, here we got some levels we're going to remove, which are playing very nicely at the moment. Uh, so we'll, we'll actually uh, remove that on Amazon. Amazon up 1.5, volume kicking in after the cpi data here as well love the daily guys getting above the most recent area of resistance this previous day close line sitting at 12880 uh, above that i'm sorry 126 i believe 12657 sitting above that nicely so definitely like to uh I'll see that there um <clears throat> excellent um guys we're set let's take a look at our community events and announcements and we'll bring this up here and peter will take us through what's happening uh today and and tomorrow uh, maybe I'll mention, I just see Eamon in the room. I want to say hi to Eamon and, uh, Eamon and social media was posting non-trading stuff. I had to appreciate that. He was, uh, taking a little trip. You know, it's a funny thing. You know, I, I'm, I'm sort of, a, I've traveled a lot of the world all, all over the place. Never been to, never been to Russia though. And, uh, obviously now is not the time to go if you're a foreigner, especially from, you know, where we're from North America. But, uh, but it, what's fascinating to me is that uh, Eamon keeps posting these pics of him sort of in the countryside. And uh, it, it's on to me that I never realized that in my head, influenced by too many American movies, 
I never thought of uh, Russia, especially near Moscow, having countryside. Like, you know, like most cities have green spaces, right? Or somewhere, at least you go out around it. And there's there's got to be like rivers and, you know, grass and trees. I think because the only scenes I've ever seen since I was like a kid is the gray, dank, wet streets of uh, of Moscow and desolate landscape. That's what I pictured of, of Russia. P- and Peter's like, talking like I, a true... A true uh, North American. <laughs> uh, isn't it? Like, it, it's funny because I never, it, it was Eamon that made me realize that is a dumb, like, it, it's uh, clearly There's more to it. And, There's more to it. <laughs> and it doesn't make sense. It, it, it can't possibly be like that. Or they wouldn't be able to feed themselves. But anyways, it, it's, it just, it was one of those things that made me realize, huh, I have got a completely wrong view of probably what the larger portion of Russia actually looks like, right? But anyways. Um, yeah, it, it's the same, it, it's the same way that if you're in North Korea, the the visions, how I, I love those videos that came out that they showed how, you know, Americans aren't really as rich as they pretend to be, how Americans all eat pigeons and live in tents. Did you ever see that video? That was awesome when that came out. I, I haven't, but anyway, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> there you, you look that up. Anyways, it was, it was pretty cool. It was propaganda put out by North Korean government where, where all, all North Americans just have to subside off of eating pigeons that they catch. So anyways, all right, let's get to what's happening in our community. Um, uh, it's Tuesday today, which means that we've got a uh, exciting strategy session talking about the where. I see Thor's in the room today. Thor, are you excited to go and you're, you're, you're ready for your trade book session tonight, I hope? Um, Thor's got three components he talks about all the time. The where, the when, and the how. He's going to be talking about the <laughs> he's going to be talking about the where and yes in the video they did say it tastes like chicken anyways as you, I, chris i i'm i'm all full of useless facts unfortunately no no useful facts that could help me win jeopardy but anyways attend tonight eight o'clock in the strategy well in the webinar room we'll have thor doing the where that's uh it's going to be a great session hopefully you will be there next week andrew is going to be with us talking about reversal trading we all know that he's a trading master and he's going to share some of his trips tips and tricks what he's learned over the course of his illustrious trading career so that's on the 20th of june at eight o'clock it is uh well it's a tuesday which means the options chat room is not open but Tomorrow, it shall be. So if you want to learn about options every three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we've got that options chat room open with Megan and Jared. They are there to help uh, support and educate anybody who wants to attend. So hopefully you'll join us in that chat room. Uh, on uh, in Every day, and I was looking at it avidly this morning, waiting for the numbers to come out. I go to tradingterminal.com to get my information on uh, what's happening in the markets, everything from the calendar of events, the social calendar, social calendar, the <laughs> economic calendar is what I'm trying to say, the IPO calendar, uh, even, of course, our gappers. It's there within the scanners. Uh, and if, of course, you want to re- do a live simulator, you can go to tradingterminal.com for that hopefully you will join us there yeah my social calendar is not in trading terminal but uh you know one day <laughs> if you want to join us in uh the bearable traders you can use one of our membership options intro basic or elite on a monthly basis or the elite annual you see them there you love them hopefully you'll join us we'd love to see you as part of our trading room if you're not already and uh and yeah it's a great a great deal so <laughs> Isaac wants to know how he's going to come and hang out with me if I don't put my social calendar in there. Well, this is my social calendar, 8.30 every morning right here. You're, you're my peeps. So that that's it's all I live for. So I, 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 you know, I am Peter AI. Maybe I should put that in there. I go back into my uh, you know charging cupboard until tomorrow because I expend a lot of energy in the morning here. <laughs> just kidding all right guys have a great trading day we got some stuff still to do here um because uh like you know we, we got levels to set we're gonna see what our moderators are looking at i want to remind you about our big uh live, live trading event that's coming um it's coming up at the end of the month in fact just this morning i booked my flights for my wife and i 
we're heading down to New York. We're going to make a weekend of it. We're going to see some shows. Then we're going to get ready for the trading two days of intensive learning and you know gathering with other traders. It's going to be fantastic. Last night, even amongst our team, there's new stuff coming. Artie gave us a teaser and said, more surprises to come. We know that uh, already we've got, if you sign up now, you will get a chance to be entered into a draw to attend the New York Stock Exchange tour, which will be fantastic. I've never been myself. We can only take 20 people, but uh, all those tickets are going to people that sign up uh, in this week. So sign up and your chances are really good. Like it's like one in three, maybe better than one in three of getting uh, the tour of the floor. So do it. You won't regret it. It'd give you a good chance. It'd be great if you won that, then it's something, a bonus thing you can do on top of uh, the actual conference itself. But the conference is so packed with information. It's going to be packed with great speakers, knowledgeable people, everything from psychology to experienced traders. I'm very excited to have my uh, cousin Brent Donnelly there. He's not there because of me, because he's my cousin. That was just happened to be, uh, you know, the way I, I managed to convince him to do it because this is a guy that he is an internationally renowned uh, uh, currency trader. Uh, he's written books. Alpha Trader is one of his books. He's got a couple of others out there. Um, he 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 regularly goes to economic conferences, right? This is the guy that goes to Davos. He's been to Jackson Hole. He does these things. He is awesome at what he does, and he's part of uh the that that economic hierarchy so uh, it'd be great to hear what he has to say while he trades currency his lessons are equally applicable to uh options and uh and current um equities is what i'm trying to say so uh he knows about it all he started trading equities before he moved to currency so join us to hear uh brent speak as well as of course Kreta being there anyways i'm i'm excited about that like i am about a lot of things but um i'm really looking forward to it so new york city here we come, baby. So hopefully we'll see you there. All right. All right. I've taken us over time. Carlos, finally, back to you. You can set some levels. All good, my friend. Uh, I was looking at this BIL, which uh, was given to us by <laughs> by, by YouTube chat. as like educational purposes. Looks like a barcode here. Oh, my here. God. Yeah, this is, uh, what this the, is, this is that nuts. That is disgusting. <laughs> it, it really is. It really is. I almost puked. But um, let's look like at some that, stuff. That's well, looking the, much better. Yeah. That That's a perfect barcode trade right i mean again oh, yeah. Yeah. that 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 is exactly what you want to avoid so that you know no, normally it's not quite so perfect as that but oh my god look at that a one cent range and uh, yeah you know that's clearly what you want not to trade and wow look at the daily chart that is so weird it literally yeah. what, what is this thing because it like literally ramps. goes up over the course of the month yeah and then starts like the ramps month back here. at the same level <laughs> that's, that's man very strange um, but let's take a look here, guys. That's something that looks a lot better. Oracle, man, Oracle is crushing. Uh, look at this here this morning, up 6.2. Just continues to move oh, higher. Let's do some levels. Say what? Sorry. Oh, BIL. It's a it's a it's a T bill uh, stock tracking stock. A one to three month T bill. So that makes sense why it goes up every month and then uh, drops back makes down. Sense. Right as yeah. as the bills yeah. mature, it basically is just trading in that that range of price yeah. variability based on uh, maturity. So anyways, all right, let's yeah. get to stuff we can actually trade. All right, here we go. Starting with Oracle, guys. 123.94 is the high of the pre-market. We will slam a level there. So you guys slam a thumbs up over on YouTube. We appreciate it. We'll try to get to 145 today. Sitting at 81. So doing okay right now. Um, a couple of minutes to try to get that 145. We would love for you guys to help us there. Low of the pre-market, 120.64. We got those two levels set. Then you guys a nice gap up that we had this morning all the way to one uh to 117 previous day close and other levels down there as well so um that looks good uh, let's head over to the left on the daily have we been up here on oracle uh i don't feel like this stock gets enough attention or action to uh be all the way up here but i believe it was more expensive than this in the past uh maybe I not so. i thought it was unless it has some kind of split my mind is, is bugging out but um right now looking at all-time highs man, this, man. Uh, no, yeah, that can't be. Hold on, is it really all time highs? Uh, I, I, as far as I can go, 2004. I mean, I know this company goes back, um, 1998. Yeah, yes. no, it seems to be highs. okay. All right, so yeah. that does make it a little more interesting sitting here. I didn't realize we were at all time highs, so yeah, we are. That puts us well above the all time highs too. So yeah, interesting. Okay. Yeah, all yeah, right. we we we're, we're, we're up there, my friend. So there you have it, guys. Looks good today. That is what I have it on my list. I think today, out of all days, this is going to be a good one. Normally, not a great trading stock, intraday trading stock, but the fact that we we did well uh, um, on Friday. 
Friday. We gapped up yesterday and held. And now we're gapping up again after earnings. I mean, that is pretty aggressive stuff there. Even if we sell off, we are going to have some fun with that one this morning. Here it is. AMD, guys, continues to push higher. I am going to mark down this level here. It's not the pre-market high, but it is important. Uh, 132, 133. So we'll slam a level there. And then our pre-market high right now, 133.74. Let's see where that ends up. Towards the bottom, highs and lows for the last two trading days. Got you covered. Do not need to do anything else there. Let's get a level towards the top here in AMD. I know we've been higher for sure. We're going to go here to the left around. This is 21.22 right there so we'll zoom into this little island over here or this little mountain that we have there and we're going to look at 137 uh 13689 and then right up here around 141 a little bit lower maybe 140 uh, 91 so two good level source of top there uh for amd that's all you need then the rest high low highs and lows of the last two trading days are taking care of you let's get our scanners back in line here um nvidia is next guys again also very explosive uh, another option in uh, trading either AMD or NVIDIA. This looks good here on the daily. We're going to remove some levels that we have here. And now our high of our pre-market over at 404.43. So we'll slam a level there. Towards the bottom, guys, highs and lows for the last two trading. This is doing a pretty good job. You got your self cover there. NVIDIA 419 up here. And outside of that, I think you're pretty much set when it comes to nvidia so let's see if we can get some momentum going here um i do like this level in the pre-market i mean we we broke out of this at 455 there i'm gonna keep that you can see that being resistance resistance and support and then back up to 402 so i like that level as well similar with amd we got this nice breakout um that can actually be a good one for today here is tesla tesla i mean it's probably the only ev that i care much about um, the other ones just don't seem to have uh, the the move that this these uh, this Tesla has here. Um, Two fifty three twenty nine again another area of gray resistance. I want to have that on there. Our pre market high at the moment two fifty four sixty. We'll see if that can push any higher. But there it is two sixty four. Uh, 60 there we have it but um again looking just incredible here on tesla as we continue to push higher let's get another level above that oh look at this we're at the um at the gap down that we had not so long ago so that's that 256 area there above that if we zoom in a little more get a better picture we have 257 53 and then i'm going to mark this one here anything is possible with tesla this thing is moving just so well uh, uh in the last couple of weeks so there you have Tesla. We'll take a look now at our, our last one here. I have Baba on deck. Baba is up 2.6, shares traded. I like the breakout here uh, on Baba. So let's see if we can get some kind of continuation, even a, a sell-off, right? So we're, we're far enough that a sell-off down to the previous day close. It's about $2 move. That could be real nice on Baba. Baba is great to short, always has inventory for short. It, for me, it's one of the best Chinese takers to trade. It really is. It's so clean when it is in place, and it has it has treated us very, very well. Um, high of the pre-market, 88.28. Above that, 89.34. And above that, I am going to go with this level instead of this one. Why? Because we have more confirmation here. 90.73, right? Can this still be a level? Absolutely. 91.44. Yes, a dollar, almost a dollar away there. So you can still put that level there and you can use both. But the first initial level is the best one closest to the price action. So I'm going to go with that one for right now. There you have it, guys. Towards the bottom, highs and lows of the last two trading days um we are pretty much set there and then our secondary list looks also very good ccl with 2.1 million potr with 3.2 million and climbing how many i have one two three four five that's enough for me but potr is another good one if you want to have that one there um you have GameStop did a little something something popped up heading sideways trying to build volume and intc another uh, tech company also doing well 3.5 so much to choose from today guys and the fun for this week is just started tomorrow we're going to have a lot more fun uh as we're hitting 100 likes here on youtube and getting uh 40 more in just a second to hit our goal so thank you for that really really uh, appreciate that uh there guys we are all set marshall says uh i love how intc trades good man i i'm not a big fan of it but i say this though in the last couple of weeks we've seen better trading out of intc Right. I mean, just just even look at the candles here from the 26 yeah. and on. Look at the bodies. Right. That's that's nice. You are getting movement yeah. opposed to this. And that's the great thing about trading is that, you know, you could hate a certain stock and the way it trades and others could love it. So, you know, it just depends on your style and what you're looking yeah. for. I mean, 
John yeah. talks all the time about, you know, he only likes to trade stocks in the hundred dollar range because it makes him feel comfortable. And, um, you know, that's, that's cool. I, I understand that. So yeah, it's lovely. So if you love Intel, awesome. You know, AMD is my guy. I, I stick with AMD all the time because I like the way it trades, even though others don't. Yeah. Yeah. And in those cases, my friend, you have to do you, right? You do you. It's the way to go on something like that. And, uh, and that's okay. It's very, very, very okay. All right. Guys, let's take a look at our moderators list this morning. Looking forward to see what they have because our list is going to look very different today because it's just so much to select from. And you can start being picky based on just what you like, what you don't like. Um, the letter that the, the ticker starts with, you can get very creative today and you'll be and you, you'll have an amazing list. So let's bring that over. Let's see what we have here. Um, I'm going to move this over here. Apple, you know what? We have such a great list. I didn't even look at Apple. Alex on the palm tree is his username. Um, that sounds nice. Alex on the palm tree. You know, that, that it sounds so relaxing, my friend. I, I mean, man, man, oh, man. Love it. All right, let's take a look here. Let's bring this over if I can. Um, and we'll look at Apple after uh, after this uh, for Alex on the palm tree. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, we are starting with our buddy and pal, Eamon. Eamon, long BA this morning. Well, not long, potential long BA, potential short WFC. Rapsilla, AMD and AI, even though Carlos doesn't like it. I, I hear you, man. It's, it's It could be a good one. Could be a good one. Uh, Tesla as well on his list. I do like that one. Susan, Tesla, Amazon, Apple, secondary list, NVIDIA, Disney. Kind of want to try a swing trade. Go for it. Uh, go for it. Go for it. Look at options as well. Options are, are fun. Um, Thor, uh, watching equities, Tesla, NVIDIA, and Meta, ETF, spies in the queues, and futures. There you have some of those as well. Uh, Megan looking at Tesla, BA, and NVIDIA. Heading down here, we have uh, Peter. You're looking at AMD, Tesla, PLTR, which is another good one as well. NVIDIA, Oracle, and Man U for sports. And then Paris is looking at Tesla, AMD, Oracle, Apple, and GameStop. So there you have it, friends. That is our moderators list. I mean, there's just so much to look at this morning. I'm sticking with Oracle, uh, AMD, NVIDIA, Tesla, and Baba this morning. I think those are going to do uh, well. Yeah, we're, we're all over the place as moderators. Just like you said, there's a lot to watch. So there's lots of opportunity. So be careful with whatever opportunity you pick. Trade smart. And uh, thanks so much for being here with us. Don't forget, sign up for New York. We want to see you there. Care, yes, we'd we'll love to see you guys in New York. Take care. Have an amazing training days, guys. See you guys tomorrow.